Hi, you're joining us here in complicated conditions at Cadwell Park. This is the final round of the Thundersport GB Championship 2016. Thanks to the girls there, unfortunately not great scenes here for the final round of the championship, certainly weather-wise. Cadwell Park is absolutely drenched here with two races still to go and a championship to be decided in the Avon Tyre Super Twins and the HMT Racing Stock Twins. Johnny Towers there, number 17, has led the championship for some time but unfortunately lost grip of it last round. Paul McClung's here, we know he can win races but John Simpson came into this weekend with a four-point lead but after yesterday... He comes into today with a 17-point lead with 50 available. Two races coming up. We'll keep you up to date with how the Stock Twins are going as well. That championship already won by Greg Madero. So it's between Simpson, number 71, and number 17, Johnny Towers. You can't miss Towers, even in conditions like this. He's got one of the brightest bikes out there as they head up towards turn number one. If uh, these riders then head away, basically, as we see here from Luke Mamet, I'm not sure what we're seeing because I can't see anything. The Mauritian rider, I bet he wishes he was back in Mauritius at the moment because this ain't very good, is it? Let's be honest. As he makes his way, I think, around on onto the park straight, uh, trying to make headway. Luke Mamet, one of our stock twin riders who I'm sure will be battling for the podium in this race. I can't see a thing there. Paul McClung it is that leads from Johnny Towers 17 and John Simpson. So the two championship rivals are together there. James Cowton I saw just up there as well. We saw Greg Madero, the champion. 1-1-1 one, 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 just going through there. Aaron Bradley, of course, who's going to take the runners-up spot in that championship. So with 17 points the difference between Simpson and Towers, realistically, Johnny Towers there needs to finish ahead of John Simpson just to try and maybe give a bit of pressure to the Northern Irishman as we head into the second race this afternoon. There's number 96, that's uh, Jason Markham uh, on the British Army race team Suzuki. But Paul McClung it is the lead from Haddington on that Kawasaki. Paul McClung at times this year has been absolutely sensational. Uh, it looks like he might hang on to third place overall in the championship. He's up ahead of Dan Taylor, but anything can still happen here. And, uh, we see now tipping into the bottom of the mountain. Riders jostling for position. There's number 444. Uh, Daniel Moss. There's quite a bit of moss on the ground there by the looks of things. Look at all the leaves just on the exit of the hairpin. Johnny Towers at the moment there in second place then doing what he needs to do. It's amazing, you know, how these championships have gone up and down so far this year. Three, four rounds ago. I tell you what, you'd have taken my house off me. Oh, as Luke Mamet has a moment you'd have told me that Johnny Towers would relinquish his lead overall in this series but John Simpson there number 71 has been so consistent he's been closing he's been catching and a few bad rounds oh dear who's that that's a big crash that's Dan Taylor who's gone down on the start finish straight massive crash there for Dan Taylor he's looking around as if to say I don't know what's gone on there so he clipped the grass by the looks of things maybe not sure either that well I don't know what's happened but Dan Taylor's gone down that will certainly help Paul McClung's uh, fight to try and finish in the top three of the championship overall. He's up ahead of this race off Johnny Towers, who's now pulled away from John Simpson and Greg Madero there in fourth, who leads the Stock Twins. Number five there, as I mentioned before, is James Cowton, one of the Super Twin riders, uh, out there on the Cowton race in Kawasaki. McClung at the moment, quite comfortable out front, ahead of Towers. Towers on for 20 points here with John Simpson there, number 71 on for 16. So that would be four points that Johnny Towers would make up, which would mean 13, the difference, going into the final race this afternoon. You'd still feel that John Simpson should be pretty comfortable in that position. As we see Ben Tolliday, number 133, and Neil uh, Schofield uh, from Barnsley. And it looks like Ben Tolliday's had enough. He's not playing in the wet any longer. His leg's up in the air. He said no. No thanks, I'll let you lot battle away here. This is ugly, and I don't blame him, to be quite honest with you. Here is Johnny Towers then at the moment in second place. He knows he's got to finish this race. That is absolutely crucial. But he's up ahead of his rival. That's the most important thing as we get a glimpse here again of Neil Schofield. Currently, inside the top eight. 
There is numbers 42 and 43. It's Max Dixon, Alex Platt. Three is Ryan Redman. Tiptoeing around the uh, downhill hairpin there. There is John Simpson then. Yellow flags waving as they come past the start-finish line after that crash on the previous lap from Dan Taylor. Just down there on the grass. The bike's just been pushed to safety. Now we're on board with uh, Samuel Mosley. And uh, he's now making his way onto the start-finish straight as well. Just see how awful the conditions are out there. There's the wave yellow flag. I think he got the move done before he saw the yellow flag, so he should be all right. He shouldn't have to give up on that place again. But Mosley at the moment is up inside the top six. Here is Towers. He's in second. Paul McClung further up the road. He leads. There's John Simpson. Simpson at the moment in third place. I think he'd probably take that right now if you were to put the chequered flag out. So there's your leader, Paul McClung, number 49, heading down into Mansfield already. We wait now for Johnny Towers in second, number 17. There he is, 20 points for second. In the background, John Simpson third. 13 would be the difference if chequered flag goes out right now going into this afternoon's race. I've got to sit here with me in the commentary box. Amazing that the championships that have gone down into this final round, Sid, they've gone sort of up and down, haven't they? And I was just saying, Johnny Towers had such a firm grip on this series earlier on in the season. It's just remarkable how, it, how things can change. Yeah, but uh, John Simpson's come in, he's stepped up his game, decided he just wants this. Uh, but uh, again, as you say, another championship that's ebbed and flowed and... Uh, it's really exciting, I have to say. I mean, unbelievable. And then to throw the weather conditions into the mix too, it's just really, really strange days indeed. Yeah, it's, these weather conditions, when you're fighting for a championship, you get the feeling that one rider's probably happy, the other not. Of course, the rider that defends a championship lead when faced with this, it's, it's nervous times, it has to be said. Whereas, of course, it does present a bit of an opportunity to the rider's second place overall in the championship. That's provided that they're okay in the wet, uh, in terms of their wet weather riding skills, as we see here, uh, Luke Mamet, our Mauritian rider, battling with uh, the rider we're now on board with, Samuel Mosley, on this Suzuki. Onto the start, finish straight, we go again. He's gonna try and find his way into the slipstream. This is the battle for fifth place, as it stands. Sorry, sixth place because, of course, Greg Madero is up ahead of these guys, the Stock Twins riders. So these guys are battling for second in the Stock Twins. Greg Madero, the champion, further up ahead on circuit. Yeah, you, arguably, you could say to yourself, why did you bother coming out, Greg? <laughs> you know, but uh, he, he loves it, whatever the weather, and uh, he's had an absolutely fantastic season. Um, really, really done well. And... Uh, for, uh, uh, lovely overtake manoeuvre there. Very brave and bold into the park there. But, uh, yeah, they, I mean, I have to say, it's uh, when you get these kind of conditions, uh, the stock twins are right up there, really, aren't they, with the super twins? Yeah, they certainly are. As you see there, Neil Schofield then just inside the top eight, up ahead of number 52, Sam Mosley. So I forgot about Neil as well. Uh, how could I forget about Neil in the equation? Just Barnsley. up ahead of these guys as well. Is it from Barnsley? He certainly is, and uh, he's on for a decent podium here in the Stock Twins class if he can keep it upright. There is Johnny Towers then up ahead of John Simpson. This is exactly what he needed to do. Although I'm sure he would have rather John Simpson was battling away with one or two riders just to give him something else to think about. They tip into the hairpin. Across the line once more then for Paul McClung. He has a mammoth lead here in this race. We've said it a few times this season when Paul McClung's turned up. When he gets it right, he's tough to beat. Still, absolute. Look at that weather. I mean, that is unbelievable. Who wants to be out Whoa, there? And Luke. Luke Mamet almost throws it at the scenery himself. Well, I mean, that is just like a wind tunnel, a wet wind tunnel uh, on Leaves an awful. I mean, just awful conditions. These are brave boys, I tell you. Brave boys. They haven't got any choice, Sid, some of them. I, uh, <laughs> Championship I, I was going to say, you know, Luke Mamet as well. What a great season he's had. I mean, he's really come on strong this year. Yeah, he's uh, he's done very well. You can hear there, just from our various points around the circuit, just how bad it is. There's be a lot of riders that are hoping for a check to see a checkered flag at the moment. There's only a bit of rain. What's up with you? Not least, of course, John Simpson, who's in third at the moment. As I said before, I don't think he'll mind. 
losing three points. There's Sam Cox. He's gone down out of the race. Near 450 rider. There is number five. That's James Cowton. He's in fourth. Fifth for Greg Madero. So Madero, uh, as it stands, fifth on circuit, but leading the uh, Stock Twins. So he'd be on for another trophy here. So then, stats boy, come on. What is the uh, slippery surface? Yeah. <laughs> That's got to be understatement flag of the year, that one. <laughs> <laughs> it certainly has. It's treacherous through here as Johnny yeah. Towers makes his way through. That looked like Pete Copeland, was it? <laughs> his kind of stance. No, it isn't. No, no. Um, but I'll tell you what, you know, where's... Uh, so where's John Simpson going to finish to take the championship in this one? Well, he Can needs he take it? Can no, he take well, it? he could, but he, for a start, he needs to be ahead of Johnny Towers, and he's not and he would then need Johnny Towers to fall back a few places. It's not going to happen here in this race unless Johnny Towers falls. So if Johnny Towers falls, not that we're obviously hoping no, for anything like that, that not at all, no. um, then John Simpson would be champion here in this race, but it doesn't look likely. It's going to go to the final race of the season. See a change there, Luke Mamet going back past Samuel Mosley, who we ride on board with. Here is Johnny Towers. As I said, as it stands, Towers would be 13 behind John Simpson going into this afternoon's race. You see, I didn't think that uh, Johnny Towers was a man for the rain, but he has completely uh, proven my assumptions wrong here today. Well, he's, like I said, he's got little choice, really. He had to get the gloves off, as we see here again. Sam Mosley, obviously not afraid of latest on the brakes into Park Corner. There is your race leader, Paul McClung, just putting a lap on number 70, Paul Williams. He's lapping now everyone up to 13th place. Absolutely wow. flying here, Paul McClung. Through Paul Benz he goes. There's going to be no doubts as to who wins this race. He's 20, 20 seconds up the road ahead of uh, Johnny Towers. This is another young man who's going places. He's... Uh... He's got a BMW ordered for next year in GP1. And, uh, you know, I'm, he's going to take some beating. Yeah, it could be a dark horse, Paul McClung, for next year. Your last lap flag is out. You can see there, Paul McClung looking over, almost willing the last lap flag yeah. to come out. Then he was thinking, there isn't another one, is there? <laughs> Please let this be the final lap of the race. As they now, uh, we see number 52. I'll tell you what is a bit of a worry, Sid. Not entirely sure if I just saw John Simpson going round then. John Simpson, the championship leader, has not come through the timing beam down at the start finish straight. John Simpson's gone missing. And this could be crucial for the championship because Johnny Towers is at the moment in second. He is circulating. Johnny Towers here with second. Well, this will change everything all over again. A 17 point lead John Simpson had coming into this race. Surely not. Unbelievable. Totally unbelievable. It all happens at Thundersport GB. Well, you just cannot write this sort of stuff. Coming into this race, John Simpson with a 17 point advantage over this man, number 17, Johnny Towers. And if he stays upright, Johnny Towers now will go into the final race of the season. Three points clear on the Northern Irishman. Wherever John Simpson is around this circuit, however he's fallen out of the race, he will be absolutely livid, Sid. He will. We haven't seen him crash, so maybe he's broken down or something's gone wrong. But uh, 17 points ahead. And Johnny Towers is number 17. Oh dear, spooky. <laughs> spooky around the Halloween time. But that brings it again straight down to, I mean, when you look at the like, uh, if it finishes like this, uh, like a three-point difference. I mean, that means they've gone through all this season. We might as well just have the last race and done with. It's just ridiculous. Oh, Johnny Towers here is really in two minds as to what to do. The chequered flag is out. Paul McClung's going to win the race. Towers there, thought about a lunge, going into the hairpin. He will stay upright, I'm sure. And confirmation that he has. Uh, he finishes in second place ahead of James Captain. Greg Badiro fourth. He wins the stock twins ahead of Mosley and Luke Mamet. There are just three points between Towers, who now leads, 
and John Simpson. No wonder Towers on the left is smiling, but the winner of that race is Paul McClung in the Super Twins and Greg Madero winner again in the Stock Twins. James, unbelievable race. I mean, how you got through that, I'll never know. I know, it's uh, quite treacherous really, you know, we were just talking to the lads there, just spinning up everywhere and that's on a little 650, so I dread to be on a thousand today, but uh, yeah, you know, just had to keep at it and keep smooth and, um, you know, uh, John Simpson dropped out there, so you know we got the podium as well. But uh, horrendous, but uh, you know it's out of days. You know you can't choose them; it's just how it is. Yeah, but I mean you, you know, there's a lot of skill to actually end up on the podium in this kind of weather. Yeah, it's just uh, I don't really uh, rate the wet, wet to be fair. But uh, you know you have to you have to ride in it sometimes, and um, yeah, just a matter of. Uh, Getting it all together and having a good setup, which you know the boys give me a good setup there, and so yeah, spot on. Which brings me to something else. People to thank. Yeah, you know everybody who's helped me this year. You know Knox, um, Shuey Home, it's East Coast Motorcycle World, my dad, my mechanic Neil. You know everybody who gets together just makes it all happen, and uh, thank you very much. Johnny Towers, mate, how many twists and turns? is this championship going to have? I mean, look, I've never seen anything like it in all the time that I've been in racing. said it's mad, isn't it? Uh, uh, yeah. It's, uh, I learned after Donington, I'm just going to just take whatever it comes. Whatever, you know, I was dead relaxed going into this weekend, but I've got nothing to lose. I'm going to ride every session, just enjoy it. Ali's brought a beautiful looking bike down. I thought if I go home Sunday night in one piece with a bike looking nice, I'm happy. I had a good ride yesterday. I did. John was untouchable yesterday in the dry. I had nothing there. But, you know, I brought it home two podiums. And then today, you know, look at it. Well, in the past this year, I mean, it would be fair to say that the wet's not been your favourite condition. But, you, I mean, you've ridden really well today. Yeah, I, I appreciate You know, people said that. But my first race last year, second race in Thundersport, uh, it was at uh, Rockingham. And it was soaking wet. And I won by 20 seconds. Uh, but at Brands, the beginning of the year, I had no feeling with the bike and I did really struggle. But having said, and then since then, I was pole in Anglesey in dodgy conditions. It's pole yesterday in dodgy conditions. So I don't like riding in the rain, but I can if I have to. So, yeah. And today, I mean, Paul was superb. I had nothing to match him. But that, without question, was the worst conditions I've ever ridden in. Literally in top gear, you were rolling down the straight because otherwise the once in six gear flat the bike went sideways on me so then you had to just roll it off down the straights there's plenty of grip around all the corners but the straights were probably the worst you know the dodgiest conditions but three points between is now going to the last race it it's all uh, yeah it's all okay. on. i take that back then i take all that back what <laughs> i said um and of course uh yeah, Paul Untouchable. Well, he's from Scotland. What else do you expect? What? <laughs> uh, what? Uh, um, uh, who have you got to thank? Oh, as usual, you know, I've got Austin, uh, Austin here, Austin Bowden and Ali. Uh, we've just come with our own little team this year because Nick hurt himself at Donington, so we haven't got the full team edge here. So Austin and Ali. Ali's uh, brought a brilliant bike again. Uh, Complog pre for prepping the bike. Um, but yeah, Austin and Ali. They're, they're the ones. So, yeah. Can't wait for the last race now. Oh, I don't know about that. We will get through it, see what happens. <laughs> well right. done. Cheers. Paul, well, that was... Uh, I just had a little joke uh, with, with Johnny there about you come from Scotland, so you're used to this. But, I mean, it was, like Johnny said, it was treacherous there, wasn't it? Yeah, the conditions weren't the best. Like, going down both the straights, your bike's just aquaplaning and everywhere, the front end's trying to tuck, but... I quite enjoy it. I think it's it's fun. You have to stay alert. So I was just cracking on there, staying in my rhythm and enjoyed it. It was mega. Uh, well, I mean, to finish at the top of the podium in that is a real big feather in your cap, mate. Who have you got to thank? Uh, just everyone, all my family as usual. Uh, Lenny, uh, Ian, Diana Dice, Johnny Towers. He uh, gave us a helmet, so big thanks to him. And uh, just everyone that helps me, supports me and watches me. Cheers. Greg Madero. <laughs> Many, many congratulations, not only on that race win, but 2016 champion. How good does that sound, though? Again, how, does it good, how good does it sound? It's amazing. We work all year towards it, so obviously to get it, especially before the last round and have no stress on you is a massive thing. I wouldn't want to be in Johnny's situation. Those two are probably going away a bit nervous. I don't blame them. That's really down to the knife edge. So I wouldn't want to be in their situation. I'm happy mine's done and dusted and... I did what I needed to do early on, so now it's just fun. 
But, like, that was obviously wet and treacherous, and yet, and you said the pressure wasn't on you, you didn't need to win that race, and yet you did. So, what do you think? Is that, like, being able to relax, do you think, makes it much easier? I actually eased off quite a lot. Um, towards the end of the race, I was easing off. I actually debated coming in on second lap. I went down the straight, and it's one of the scariest I've ever rode my bike. I went down the straight, and it was just left and right down the straight. It was really scary. Then I seen someone had crashed down the straight. I knew exactly what had happened. They'd aquaplaned and lost it. But then uh, a bit later on the race, I saw Simpson had gone down and there was a super twin behind me and my pit board said plus 25. So I knew I had a massive gap. So I decided I'd let him go through and follow him through the puddles because he'd move everything out of the way for me. And then I just cruised it home from there. I kept checking the pit board. I had such a lead. I knew I could just tiptoe around and finish the race from about five laps on. I had half a second lead, something like that. So I just knew, just take it steady and come home. But it is horrible conditions. I'm soaking wet. Boots are all squidgy and... Uh, I would prefer sunshine, but I don't mind riding in the wet or the dry, so I'm over the moon with another race win, and uh, it's definitely the way to finish the season. We're standing on the top step at the last race meeting, so hopefully we can do it once more again. And people to thank. Yeah, I've got a massive thanks. Eddie at Precision Signs in Hampton, he's done some stickers to the bike for me. Cy has, again, helped me out towards another set of tyres, which I'm very grateful for him to do that for me. Uh, also, my stepdad, Ray, as you know, Ray's always working on the bike. He, he wasn't even a bike mechanic, but tell you what, he, he really has worked hard to learn what he needs to learn. He, he's always asking, always taking on information. But wet settings, he's done the bike, handles like a dream. We've done what we need to do, so obviously he's doing something right. I don't know, he just sets it up for me and I go out and ride it, so I'm over the moon. Once again, it's down to him and me for winning the championship. Without a good bike underneath me, I wouldn't have won it, so I owe him just as much as uh, I owe myself credit for riding the bike. So. As always, team effort. Well done, Greg. Thank you very much, guys. We go into the 34th and final race of the season with just three points between Towers and Simpson. Join us in a moment. Here we go then, this is it for the Avon Tyres, Super Twins and Stock Twins, uh, also brought to you by HMT as well, Whole Beach Motorcycle Tyres, this is their home round, and now, the moment for John Simpson, God knows what he's feeling like at this moment, having lost a 17 point lead, and uh, now a 3 point deficit to this man, Johnny Towers, it's all about this final round, the 34th and final race. The Stock Twins are also out there. Greg Madeira already champion. But Johnny Towers, number 17, has a three-point lead over number 71, John Simpson, coming into this race. Paul McClung could play a big part in this, of course. He won the race earlier on. If he wins this one, then it could mean anything is possible. There are 900 points available over a single season for these guys in the Thundersport GB Championships and just three separate them coming in to this final race. On board here with Samuel Molesley. Sid is here with me in the commentary box. Sid, uh, how on earth has this gone down to the final round? I have no idea. It's yet another one. I can't believe how many championships have gone down to the final race of the final round. Unbelievable. I mean, this, I mean, for us, it's perfect, but uh, just truly awesome. Well, the situation is like this. Paul McClung leads at the moment. Johnny Towers has to finish ahead of John Simpson and it's job done. John Simpson has to finish ahead of Johnny Towers and it's job done provided both riders are actually on the podium when they cross the line. There's a few permutations there involved. It's unlikely that if both Simpson and Towers finish the race, they'll finish beyond third place. So you could argue that they've just got to beat each other for the championship here. Stay ahead of each other because there's some big points on offer. There they are. It's second and third overall. Paul McClung at the moment has the lead of the race. Well, you say that, um, and I, 
know, I trust what you say, Steve, you know that, but uh, in these conditions, and again, as, as I've said many a time before, these are trickier conditions than the full wet. At least with the full wet, you know what you've got. And, uh, you know, to say that these two won't finish beyond the podium, with these super twin boys look right up their jacks, well, what can we say? Come on to the start and finish straight. Paul McClung has the lead from number 71, John Simpson. Number 17, Johnny Towers there looking up the inside already. These are the guys that we want to keep an eye on for the championship. And further back there, you can see 127 and 121. It's Adam Green and Stephen Taylor. 35 there is Jim Hawkins. And some weird and wonderful machinery coming around this uh, circuit in the Super Twins and the Stock Twins as well. In the Stock Twins, of course, we know Greg Madeira is already champion. He's a cut above the rest, and Johnny Towers has now gone up ahead of John Simpson and again take control of the championship. John Simpson won't like that. At the moment, Paul McClung has just been left alone out front. Here we can see the rose-tinted glasses of Luke Mamet uh, on his uh, stock machine, the Mauritian rider, with quite a nice yellow view of everything. Here are the two boys that are battling for this championship. Neither have won a championship with Thundersport before. John Simpson was with us in one of his first seasons on a 600 Trick Bits Triumph, it was, uh, but couldn't quite get himself that ultimate championship overall, although he did win a few races. He then went into British Championship, won a couple of stock 600 races, won here at Cadwell as well. Johnny Towers has now been with us for a couple of years, of course. Uh, the senior of the two, a lot of experience. Oh, we see a rider go down there on the left. Who's that that's just gone down? Uh, not sure, is that Ryan Redman, I think, who might have just gone down? Can't be 100% sure, uh, but someone definitely gone down there on the left as we just go around the mountain. These are the two that we want to fixate on, though. There's Mammoth, Platt, Tolliday. Number 42 is Max Dixon. Here are the two in second and third, though. Towers and Simpson. Towers didn't take part in a full season last year, so didn't quite get his uh, grip on a championship overall as we see Platt going through. Platt has uh, just gone through on Luke Mamet. Here's your race leader, Paul McClung. He's looking pretty comfortable, isn't he, at this moment in time as he now makes his way around Chris Curve. Nets. Beautiful machine, that uh, McClung's. Absolutely beautiful machine. Uh, such a great super twin bike. And that is actually up for sale right now. Well, I tell you what, he's got it in the shop window here, hasn't he? A brilliant wet weather win a minute ago. And at the moment, clearing off into the distance. Here you can see Johnny Towers just about holding on to second place. This is going to get pretty tasty if these two are as close as this going into the final few laps. He's trying to give him a prod, isn't he? Show him his front wheel and back off. And he's trying, he's trying to rattle Johnny there, isn't he? I, I tell you what, uh, Paul Jinks, this is one of uh, John Simpson's main sponsors. He doesn't smoke, but he's just shown me that he's already smoked 200 fags this weekend. <laughs> yes, that's unbelievable for someone who doesn't smoke. <laughs> well. Either way, you can understand the, the nerves are really jangling here in this final race. Not so for Paul McClung at the moment. Third place is already sorted for him in the championship, courtesy of that brilliant race win earlier. He's beaten Dan Taylor to third overall in 2016. Who will be on the top step? That is the question. As things stand, Johnny Towers would be crowned the Super Twins champion of 2016. He's up ahead of Simpson on circuit. Here we ride with Luke Mamet, who's just been overtaken again. Here is your race leader, McClung. Certainly looks like a well-turned-out machine, as Sid mentioned. He's just in the zone at the moment. Now breaking into Park Corner, Johnny Towers, John Simpson. Will Simpson think about putting a move on Towers in a moment? Maybe down into Mansfield Corner. He's got on terms with him there. Further back, we see number 75 there, and Nick Anderson, and number 111, Aaron Bradley a decent go at each other and here comes Simpson then he's thought about making his move but Towers is really late on the brakes going into Mansfield corner but Towers one's slightly wide on exit that might just give John Simpson a slight sniff at it but no Simpson decides he's going to take the quicker line through the chicane 
maybe he'll have a look up the inside into the mountain. Limited overtaking manoeuvres available here at Cadwell Park. He won't get it done there either. John Simpson will soon start to be getting a little impatient. They now make their way up through into Hall Bends. The hairpin is the next best place to try and get a move pulled. Dodgy though into the hairpin because it's so slippery. I mean, he's had three practices there, hasn't he, down at Mansfield? I would say he's like testing the temperature of the water each time. Uh, literally, <laughs> excuse the pun, um, but I, I don't know. It, I don't know whether, uh, it, but he's going to try, isn't he? You just know that he's going to have a go. Turn one and turn uh, four, maybe part corner. They're probably the best places to overtake on the circuit or Mansfield, like you say. Yeah, it probably won't go for a move at the hairpin unless, of course, it's the final lap of the race, in which case anything goes, I'm sure. Well, let's see what happens as we get to but the closing stages. If stages. they both go down, Steve, then it goes to towers anyway. So we well, it doesn't matter. Do. Well, it, it doesn't. Yeah, but John Simpson at the moment is the man that has to make a move if he's going to lose the championship yeah, anyway. Yeah, true. And he may as well throw caution to the wind. Let's just see what he does this time around. As they come up to years, you know, I think you're right, Sid. I think he's going to line up that move down into Mansfield. He's got to get it spot on. Got to get it spot on. So, Paul McClung at the moment, it is, that has the lead. Here comes Simpson, thought about it again, but Towers continues to be strong. He knows that Simpson's there, but he has a wobble, and that's advantage Simpson. And could that be the moment that we look back on? John Simpson there has capitalised on a mistake from Johnny Towers. Paul McClung here, now comes through Hall Benz, breaking down into the hairpin. He still has this race lead as he winds on the throttle just a few laps left of this race now into barn corner that's clever as you like that i mean if indeed that, that was what he intended to do but i mean he pushed him and pushed him and pushed him that was the fourth time he tried to break him in the mansfield and and that made johnny break later and and produced a mistake it was amazing really and now he's getting the better of the traffic yeah this is not working out well for johnny towers at all he is watching his championship lead that he gained earlier on through something happening to John Simpson just disappear into the distance and what a last couple of laps this has been from John Simpson and now all of a sudden Johnny Towers needs a mistake from Simpson to be crowned champion with the last lap flag out Towers had a wobble didn't he coming out of Mansfield will John Simpson have a wobble is there another twist here in the final lap of this race for 2016 Paul McClung just flowing his way through the traffic. Here is John Simpson breaking into Park Corner. He's just got half a lap to go. Well, the thing is, Steve, uh, Paul McClung had been putting in the fastest laps in there at 140, uh, 140 and a half. And uh, Johnny and John Simpson, they've been doing around the 142s, mid 142s. But now, now, John Simpson has stepped up. Now, Johnny Towers is still doing the 142s, same kind of pace, but he's actually stepped up. I don't think he can catch him. I don't think he's got an answer for him. Is there a rider down just there, down at the bottom of Mansfield? I'm not 100% sure. It looked like there might have been someone go down. It's going to be too late here, and there is a it rider is. down. It's Paul That's McClung. Paul McClung. McClung's gone down. McClung has gone down. The race leader. Now, that doesn't affect things in terms of the championship. But that is a big crash for McClung. He looked so comfortable. He's up and he's okay. Here is John Simpson. There's a bottom of the mountain. Well, so there was someone else down over at Mansfield. John Simpson here has put in the laps of his life. But Johnny Towers hasn't had an answer for it. The chequered flag is waiting. The championship has come to this. And John Simpson with this win will take the championship by two points. Chequered flag comes out. The Stu Super Twins winner of 2016 is John Simpson. He's gone and done it here with a couple of laps remaining. Johnny Towers, no answer. He takes second. The championship has been back and forth all the way through the weekend. And in the end, it comes to this. Simpson wins it for Towers. There you see Greg Madero, the Stock Twins champion third. Anderson fourth. Holiday in fifth place. And Alex Platt sixth. There you see the champion then, top step. Good to see Johnny Towers smiling despite the look of the championship. And in the Stock Twins there, Greg Madero just cementing his place at the top of that class. Here's the confirmation then. Two points in it between Simpson and Towers. Well done to both of them on putting on a fantastic show. Despite the spill, McClung will take third overall in the championship ahead of Dan Taylor. 
And over in the Stock Twins, we already know the outcome of this one. Greg Madero absolutely creams the field. Aaron Bradley finishes second, Max Dixon third. Well, Greg, fantastic to see you up here. Third place in the Super Twins on a Stock Twin bike. Wow, that's like something else. Uh, but also winning the championship, the Stock Twin Championship. It's brilliant, mate. Uh, what a way to go out. Yeah, I took four wins this weekend in the in the Stock Twins, so I'm over the moon with that. And just to finish it all off, third place overall in the Super Twins, so I was over the moon with that, I really was. I managed to get a good start, and uh, I knew it was behind me, it was Aaron, but I just kept my eye on the pit board. It was really tricky, because we were on drives, but there was two sections of the track that were like wet. So it was like you had to tiptoe through one bit and then make the most of it in the other bits. Some of the lads went out with wet fronts, so it was a bit of a worry when I got to the line up and I saw everyone and I was like oh have I made the right decision but turns out yeah it was the right decision and uh, we managed to get a good pace and get away from the others and bag a third place and a first so yeah. Oh, it was an excellent decision there's no doubt about that well very well done and massive congratulations not only on the on the championship win but the four wins in your own class and indeed the third here uh, in the Super Twins and uh, finally final note who to thank. Yeah a massive thank you to anyone that's helped me out this year there's a few people behind the scenes that have just a little bit of help here and there. Team Willow, they've been massively supportive of us. Um, Simon, who's helped me out towards the end of this season. I, I'm absolutely over the moon, he came on board. And uh, uh, the Precision Signs in Hampton for their help. Uh, and also, obviously, Raymond, my stepdad, who's done an amazing job of making sure this year we can do what we've done. So I'm over the moon to finish off the season this way, and it's a great way. Hopefully, we can start next year the same. So, Johnny, well... <laughs> well done for second and like an incredible weekend uh, uh, massive commiserations on missing the championship by a measly two points oh, no, no. after all these rounds it's amazing Sid um, commiserations I, I, I don't feel that I feel a little bit disappointed but at the same token to go this far deep into the season you know 18 months ago I was doing track days and the odd endurance race Sid so my learning curve has been massive and you know without John here you know I might have tied this thing up by Donington uh, so we've pushed each other all the way uh, I've learned such a lot and yeah who could have scripted that you know literally to go down to the second last lap thought I didn't cover off and then I had a big moment at the bottom of uh, the gooseneck spat me out the seat and he just drove underneath me and a bad run on back markers and it, it was over. I saw the last lap flag and thought, well, you know what, we had to go right to the end. So I'm not disappointed. I, I said before the weekend I will not go home disappointed whatever happens this weekend because I know we've had a go, you know, and yeah, without ever cashing my age in, I'm a 50-year-old bloke and I refuse to go home disappointed after a season like that. So, yeah, it was it was all right, too. Well, I, right. I'm glad you feel it. I was, like, very calm. and that, But, I, I mean, that's, that's not done a lot of good for my health, I can tell you. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm, poor, poor old Paul Jinx. He must have had nearly cardiac arrest this weekend. I came in this weekend the most relaxed I've been all year, to be honest, because I figured it's out of my hands. I will do my best. I'll ride to the conditions, and I did. I survived that first race, which was crazy. And then... That one as well, you know, came within a lap of, of winning it. So I can't, uh, yeah, I can't fault that, Sid. Can't fault it. Well, uh, look, I know that you uh, help a lot of other people. Uh, I know that for a fact, which uh, I'm very grateful for. But you've got some people that help you as well. Oh, so would you like to thank I've them? Had, I've had, yeah, I mean, without boring everybody, I always say Ali Grant, you know, Ali's always been by my side this year. Uh, rough and smooth and we've had some terrible weekends and we've made some mistakes but we've made them together and we've chatted about it and we've moved on uh comp blog eddie roberts you know he's kept the ship together it's where the bikes are prepared you know uh, ali works for comp blog and then supports me on the weekend so without those guys you know it's it would have been impossible uh i've had good ties all all year with the with the pirellis um you know austin my mate austin came down this weekend and he was at donnington stepped up we needed the help uh, and he was here for us. Um, Sam, Alice and Lucas at home, they all support me. I have to ring them after every race. So then, um, yeah, my teammates, Nick Edgeley, you know, without him, I wouldn't do this because, it, you know, having him together makes it fun. And it has to be about fun at my age because it's not my job. So, yeah, all, all, of, those, all of those people, Sid. And you know all you guys as well. 
put on a great show, you know, and run a slick operation. And yeah, I'll be I'll be back at for another go next year. I'm not sure what. I'm not sure if I'll want to commit this hard to a full championship. But you know, I'm going to do the ones that I really enjoy, and I'll race a few different bikes. Maybe swap around classes a bit. Might have a look at those CB500 seniors. I reckon I could have a few of those old boys in that. So we'll we'll see, Sid. We'll see. But it's been a great year, and and a huge congratulations to these guys as well for for winning it. For John. For, for Paul Jinks and the Trickbus team, you know, whoever was going to win this truly deserved it, and they deserve it. So yeah, well done to them all. Well done, mate. Thank all you. Right. Cheers. Well, John, many, many congratulations on a fantastic championship win by two points. But I have to say, you didn't make that easy at all. No, we definitely made hard work of it. Like there was Donington with a tire, and you know we had a good lead then, and. And then to come here and <laughs> qualified 19th in the tricky conditions. I mean, I don't know what the hell I was doing. That, you know how it goes. And uh, managed to fight my way through yesterday and had two good races yesterday. And um, then the day I thought, you know, I've, I've kind of got this. I knew Johnny was really strong in the wet. And uh, with 17 points in the lead this morning, I, I thought, you know, if I just sit behind him, it's okay here. And we were doing that. And um, my grips came loose. And I couldn't have any throttle. It was just, it was just spinning in my hand. So had to pull out and then being three points down with the rain we never thought it was going to dry up oh just mental the last race there sitting behind him you know i, d I didn't know where i was going to get past there's only like one little narrow dry line and um uh, just managed he made a little bit of a mistake and i got through and i think i just got a good run through the back markers and that was it then you know i, I thought he was right on my arse the whole way to the end like but i looked back when i come across the line and thought i didn't really need to push it that much you know over the, over the last corner because it's, it's greasy as hell there like um but uh, what can I say? I'm so happy about it. You know, I, d I didn't. I'm an emotional kind of person when I'm on the bike. Uh, You've all seen me in full rage mode. Um, but uh, it all paid off in the end. Oh, it was a, an excellent win, and uh, like just right down to the wire, oh, yeah. last round of the season, last race. But people to thank, mate. Yeah, well, yeah. Um, I'd like to thank. Let's see. Uh, Pipeworks exhausts, TRS fiberglass, um, Oxford products and Bikers World Daventry and then the usual guys Paul Jenks from Trickbits Racing I mean the team's worked so hard over the year we've had our mistakes and that but I mean you know I wouldn't I wouldn't be out there with anybody else you know and get as good a package they're fantastic Kevin Brown from FBM Performance built me a supreme engine like you know it's it's really done the business and um, Brian Node from Horton Car Care top mechanic top top mechanic been with me for years and um, uh, Paul from Race Lab as well. He's been doing a good job of setting the bike up for me for the whole season as well. Obviously, my dad, my gran, you know, they've been helping fund it and they love it, you know, even though I've given nearly everyone a heart attack. And uh, I'd like to thank uh, Thundersport just for running that good meeting. You know, nowhere else seems to come close. Like, you come here and it's a, it's the proper job, you know. And also Johnny Towers. Like, I mean, if you had told me that a 50-year-old man would have pushed me that hard the whole year, I'd have been leg away off. But he'd done a good job, so all credit to him. Very magnanimous of you. Thank you very much and very... Very well done to you and the team. Yes, thank you very much. Cheers, Sid. Yeah, well done to John Simpson on a fantastic 2016. That's it from us for this year. We'll be back at Brands Hatch at the start of 2017.